Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady. The topic is still the Jordan normal form and in this part 2 I want to show you an example and all the calculations you have to do for the Jordan normal form. Here you see my example for today. It's a 4 times 4 matrix and the problem is stated in the way find a Jordan normal form for this matrix A. Let me emphasize that your goal is here to find a Jordan normal form. That's just because in the Jordan normal form you have some freedom for the order of the Jordan blocks and the Jordan boxes as I explained in the last video. Okay, then let's recall the recipe I gave you in the last video. The starting point was calculating the eigenvalues of A. Then for each of these eigenvalues we can calculate the multiplicities in the next step. So on the one hand we have the algebraic multiplicity and on the other hand we have the geometric multiplicity. Now I've already told you if we need more information then we have to calculate more spaces and look at these dimensions. And the spaces we consider are just called generalized eigenspaces. So this is our recipe for today. And don't worry, I will explain all these things in detail while doing the example. Then let's start by calculating the eigenvalues. And of course you already know, for getting the eigenvalues, you have to look at the zeros of the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of a minus lambda times the identity matrix. The fancy one here denotes the 4 times 4 identity matrix in this case. So here we can copy the matrix A. Don't forget, we need the matrix A and subtract lambda on the diagonal, which means here is 3 minus lambda, here is 5 minus lambda, 2 minus lambda, and here is 4 minus lambda. And for this matrix, we want to calculate the determinant. Which means, from this point on, you can use everything you know for calculating determinants. For example, I know if the matrix has a block structure, so you see the blocks here, and the left bottom block has only zeros, then there is a nice block formula for the determinant. If you use that, you save a lot of time because you don't have to expand the whole 4 times 4 determinant, you can just multiply 2, 2 times 2 determinants. This is how it looks then, you just need the blocks on the diagonal and then you multiply the determinants there. Working with 2 times 2 determinants is not so hard. Here we can just multiply the diagonal and then we subtract the off diagonal, which is in this case plus 1. Okay, and the same here, which means we just have the diagonal multiplied. In the next step, let's expand this first term here. So this is not so hard. We have here 15 plus 1, so this would be 16. We have 3 and minus lambda. We have 5 and minus lambda. So in the sum, minus 8 lambda and just lambda squared here. So at this point, we already know that 2 and 4 are zeros of the characteristic polynomial. The only question is which zeros are in this factor here. This is something I expect that you can calculate. And indeed, in this case, it's not hard at all. You immediately see the 4 squared here in the 16. And in fact, 4 minus lambda squared is exactly this term. Okay, and there we have our end result. We have 2 minus lambda to the power 1. So eigenvalue of 2 times 4 minus lambda to the power 3, which means the eigenvalue of 4. And what we also have are now the algebraic multiplicities. So let's denote the smallest eigenvalue, the first eigenvalue as lambda 1 equals 2 and the second one as lambda 2 equals 4. Then we see the powers in the characteristic polynomial here and immediately know the algebraic multiplicity, which I denote by alpha, is for lambda 1 just 1 and for lambda 2 3. Regarding now the Jordan normal form, I told you in the first video that the algebraic multiplicity tells you the size of the Jordan block. 
So for the first eigenvalue, this means the Jordan block has the size one times one, the smallest possible one. And for the second one, it's just three times three. The first lesson you should learn now here is that you already know a lot about the Jordan normal form. Here it is, and you already know outside of the blocks are just zeros. Therefore, the only question that remains is how many blocks are inside this big Jordan block. And from the last video, you already know there are just three possibilities in this case. The first possibility would be to have three boxes inside the Jordan block, which means the geometric multiplicity of the eigenvalue is three. So this is the case where the matrix is diagonalizable. And please note, I always use gamma to denote the geometric multiplicity. Now the second possibility would be to have the geometric multiplicity as two, which means we have two boxes in the Jordan block. Now there could be a choice how big the boxes are, but in this case, in the three times three block, we don't have a choice because the only possibility is to have a two times two box and a one times one box. And please don't forget, here we have a one and every other entries are just zeros. And now of course the last possibility is to have just one box, which coincides with the geometric multiplicity of one. And also here, don't forget the ones above the diagonal. Okay, so the conclusion for this example here is that we only need to calculate the geometric multiplicity for knowing the Jordan normal form. When we go back to the recipe, you see that this is a nice example because we calculate the eigenvalues, we calculate algebraic and geometric multiplicity, and we don't have to do step three. So we don't need to calculate the generalized eigenspaces because it's a nice example. But don't worry, I will do in the next video another example where we need to calculate these next steps. However, here we finish this example first, so let's look at the eigenspace for the eigenvalue four. By definition, this is the kernel of the original matrix A minus lambda 2 times the identity matrix. So I copied the matrix A here and now we have to subtract 4 on the diagonal. Now for getting the kernel, you know you just have to do the normal Gaussian elimination. This means we use this number as a pivot and we want to generate zeros below this pivot. So you see just one Gaussian step here. What we do is take the second row and subtract the first row. We don't change the first row, but we change the second row, which now gets you here zero, and zero here, four here, and zero here. And now we can just copy the other rows because we already have the zeros there. Okay, and then we go to the next column where we want to generate the zeros. But you see they are already there and there is no pivot, so we can continue to the third column and there we find our next pivot element. Okay, so now we take the third row and add one half of the second row. Then we get the zero we want here. And with that, we are finished with the Gaussian elimination. And I really hope you have already known that, otherwise just use the comments to ask questions. What we reached here is usually called the row echelon form. Seeing just two pivots means the other columns represent three variables. So if we call the variables x2 and x4, it means these are the three variables. And now two free variables means, of course, the dimension of the kernel is also two. And the dimension of this kernel is what we call the geometric multiplicity of the corresponding eigenvalue. Very good, now we know the Jordan normal form for this matrix. In fact, we are in the second possibility here. This means that the Jordan normal form has to look like this. And the only thing we can change is just the order of the blocks and the order of the boxes inside of this one block. Well, very good. Now you have seen one example for calculating a Jordan normal form. And then we can continue in the next video with that, where I show you a more complicated example where different things can happen. So thanks for listening and see you next time. Bye.